Hello, my name is Jacob and I am a Norse Pagan, and today we're going to be talking about cool rocks and how we turn cool rocks into even cooler rocks. Something I feel like that a lot of people end up doing when they start going down this path is you start collecting a lot of really strange objects. Uh, for instance, all of my walking sticks, um, every time I go hiking, I always seem to find another walking stick. And so one of the first ones I found, which I actually made a whole video about, was um, this one I found uh, when I was cleaning up a creek, I was cleaning up all the trash in it. Um, and to me, it always had the face of ravens kind of hidden in it. Um, and so I have carved runes into it. Now, my runic knowledge was not very good back then. Um, I don't even know where I got these from. I think it's the younger Futhark. I think I messed up. But regardless, I did call Urkanal Thala into it, and that is something that actually has stuck with it. Um, but I've always loved this as a ceremonial object. Um, and then I just, you know, some of them are just more standard, um, you know, more standard walking sticks, but they represent a journey. And then there's certain ones like this um, that I got in a very spiritual moment. Um, so I'm actually really excited. Um, I'm going to probably carve off this curved bit at the end to make it more stable. And I might try to put something at the tip, almost like a Gandalf staff. So why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about my walking sticks? Um, mostly because I'm starting to get back into crafting. And I think being crafty in some form, in some way, is a really good way to connect to the gods, but also to further yourself and further your own development within this faith. Um, I'm not exactly what I would call a crafting genius. Um, you know, I was a painter for a long time, and I kind of gave that up. Um, but I do love wood carving. I think wood carving is something that makes me feel connected to the gods. Um, working with our hands in general, I feel like it's something that really makes us connect to the gods. Um, so really, I just want to make this as a statement saying I'm getting back into crafting. I'm excited to show you what I'm working with, and um, hopefully in this video series, I'll show you what I'm doing. But this is really just a project. What am I working on? Um, so project number one is definitely potentially working on this, uh, making it more of a Gandalf type staff. I may get some kind of stone to affix at the top. But also, I have a few more projects that I've been working on, putting off. Um, one, I actually started making this a long time ago. Um, is making idols to the gods. This is a hunk of wood I got from, uh, I believe, Michael's, and it, um, it came about that shape. And I wanted to make my own idols to the gods, so this is something I definitely want to get back into. Um, I also found this the last time I was out and about, um, and I actually gave an offering to Loki. Um, the reason I like it is because it sets up straight. I believe it's slate rock. I mean, it's very light. Um, it's easy to chisel into. So I'm hopefully going to make a mobile idol almost um, to the gods, carve some runes into here perhaps, uh, put some symbols in here. That way I can take it with me and use it as a mobile altar space when I go out and about. Oh, and then there's this. So I found this beauty in a creek. Now, obviously, it's been sawn off by someone. Um, you know, it was in a park, so it was most likely, you know, for some kind of, you know, park purpose. But it has a little door down here. So I'm like, this is a house for the elves. And so I carried this thing like a half a mile back to my car um, just so I could bring it here and restore it, clean it up, um, perhaps turn this into an outdoor altar myself. Um, you know, some of you might be thinking, is he selling these things? Probably not. This is really just for me. So once again, the reason I'm making this uh, video is hopefully to introduce a series where I do start crafting a little bit more, um, where I kind of share the crafts I make, but hopefully to inspire you that even if it's just a small hunk of wood, even if it's run rock, you know, get a knife and be safe with the knife but you know carving wood to me is just a really good way um, to connect to the gods and a really good way to you know it's therapeutic it kills time without you know watching TV all the time um, and I think you know if you're making idols to the gods that makes it even more worthwhile you don't necessarily need to spend 60 and 80 dollars to find wooden idols online well I want you to support your local craftsmen um, I do think that making your own idols there's something really special about it um, so yeah, I'm going to get working today and hopefully in this video I can show you a little bit of the progress I'm making and kind of what, I'll, kind of what I'm working with. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to make this specifically for Odin. It makes sense. I want to make an idol to him um, because honestly, I was going to make this Odin at some point, but I think I'm going to make this braggy actually, if I can find a way to make it more braggy-esque. Um, like obviously I was going to black out the eye and I've been carving out the hat a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I might do this for Braggy, um, so we'll see, but I do think that just carving uh, Anzus up into here and then carving a face of Odin with two, um, two ravens, I think this will be a really good place to start, because um, I don't want to like go outside of my depth 
Um, I think this is a very simple carving um, and I'm just gonna be using a Dremel tool. So using very straight lines is going to be very helpful, but let's see how this turns out. Okay, yeah, so all I'm using is a Dremel tool. So I think these are only about 60 to to $100, not too bad. I did get it as a gift from my grandfather uh, because I did say I was getting into stone carving. Um, I'm using a ceramic bit right now, which isn't the best for this. Um, you should get a diamond bit, but I just haven't gone out to get one. I mean, I have a bunch of bits he gave me, so I'm not too worried about it yet. But I mean, this was really just, I mean, this was a two minute job getting this carved out. I mean, it's decently deep. I might go in and finish it off a little bit more. I might go through and paint it. But I mean, you can see how easy all of a sudden this became something different. The moment I carved into this with an Anzus, this became something more sacred. Um, and remember when carving with runes, make sure you think about the rune. This is a rune of enlightenment. It's a rune of Odin, um, a rune of wisdom. So make sure you're thinking about that as you carve it. Even say Anzus a, full a few times. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get started carving Odin himself and we'll see how that turns out. I'm actually really happy how this is turning out. Um, so I just realized something. Isn't Odin's eye? That's the left eye. Didn't he give his right eye? Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that. I can fix that. I have an idea. I have an idea. Uh, because what I'm thinking of, so I actually did carve the birds, um, but I had a black permanent marker, and I was like, oh, it would make a lot of sense if they were black, right? So I went ahead and covered them in. Um, so even though they're carved, they're a little colored and, like, it wasn't paint, but I mean, still the permanent marker did a pretty good job. Um, so what I might do is accent some of this, like go through and accent some of the Anzus. And then what I can do is go ahead and fill in the other eye and then I can black out that eye and then continue that almost part of a shade almost. Okay, so I'm really feeling this now. So I came through, I actually made this quite an indent and then I covered it in black. I added some uh, shadow and texture to his face and his beard. Um, I actually might bring out the wide brim hat a little bit more, um, but other than that, I'm actually really liking how this turned out. Um, I added a little bit more color and dynamic to the birds, um, added some shade and shadow up here, and then I actually did etch a little bit of a backdrop just to give it, but almost like embracing that rock texture at the same time. So I'm actually really happy with how this uh, very primal-esque Odin totem has turned out. I set this down on the table and it rattled and uh, it fell off. And so now this is off of it. But also like that kind of makes it already looked more used. Uh, so I might come through and finish this out a little bit more to make sure it, it does come off as an Anzus. But I actually kind of like that this fell off because it's definitely like, wow, this has been used before. But I also could go get, get um, some uh, glue and actually put this back on here. Probably. I mean, it's a clean cut. I mean, look at that. I'm really glad like the Odin face didn't break in half because that would probably been a bad sign. But honestly, I think this is at his age and uh, yeah, no, I think it looks good. I think Odin wanted it this way. But yeah, no, if his face would have broke, I would have been like, whoop, this is not the time. So yeah, ultimately, I think um, making things like this really makes us feel more connected to the gods um, because this is so much more personal to me now as a sacred object. Um, and I just feel like taking this out on hikes now is just going to be so much more personal. Um, it's now that I've made it. I mean, look at that. I mean, I love how that turned out. Um, even with the, the break at the top, I did like curve it off so it still looks like an Anzus, um, but it still looks just kind of worn and aged. Um, I don't know what you craft in. I don't know if it's with wood. I don't know if it's with stone. I don't know if it's knitting, um, you know, creating bows, creating axes. But, you know, I hope this is a call to action to you is that it's never too late to pick it back up. It's never too late to get back into um, craft. And I really do think it's going to help you feel more connected to the gods. Um, now, if you're not crafty, you know, I definitely recommend checking out your, your craftsmen in the community, um, supporting them. Um, oh, Etsy is a really great place to search. Instagram is as well. Um, really supporting your craftsmen and women out there that do work very hard to produce um, really quality products. Really, that's not that, that's not a complicated drawing. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm a decent at drawing. I, <laughs> I have weird paintings. Sorry, you want to see one of my paintings? I'll show you one of my paintings. So I think I've shown the old men on my channel before. Um, and of course you've seen my food painting uh, in my kitchen. 
Uh, but this was one of the more interesting projects that I got a lot of praise for, actually. Uh, we were told to paint skin. And hopefully you can tell from how red it is that this is actually my skin. So it's actually the interior of my hand. Um, and if you feel it, it actually kind of feels like skin. And it's really weird. Um, I didn't pick this project that we were told to paint flesh, okay? Um, so I really went with it. And there's just like 18 layers of paint on here that I carved into and build up these layers. Uh, so these are the kind of things I painted. <laughs> uh, my professor loved this thing and everyone's like, oh my. But I really do recommend, you know, even simple stuff like this, I think will go a long way into making you feel connected to the gods. Um, and this becomes a, a very important object. Like if my children get this, I think uh, Nick Offerman, the guy that played Ron Swanson on Parks and Rec, uh, puts it really well. He's like, if you make a table and it's the ugliest table you've ever seen, but it's built well and it's built sturdy, and your grandkids get that table and your grandkids grandkids it's not just a table it's your great great grandfather's table and that makes it mean so much more and i think with these objects that's one of the things we do these for is that hopefully one day you know our children or our friends children or you know whoever picks this up and they're like wow who made this what's the story behind this so one other thing i wanted to leave with this video is actually a thought i had today um, is, you know, so we go around, we collect sticks, we collect stumps, and we collect, uh, you know, rocks and, you know, hunks of wood, and we make them our own. But is that a modern thing, or is that something that the ancestors did as well? Um, and I don't know if there's a lot of historical evidence saying, oh, yeah, your ancestors went around and collected cool stones, because it's really hard. I mean, if it's just part of nature, it's hard to say if those actually had meaning. You know, if someone found this buried 100 years from now, I doubt they would look at it and think, oh, well, that's someone's walking stick. Um, now, maybe... You know, this if this survived with carvings in it, maybe. Um, but I really do think, like, if you watch, um, like, survival shows, like, you know, I've been watching Alone lately. It's actually been my latest obsession. Um, that's on a plug that's just, I think it's a good show. And one of the things that's interesting about that show is, I mean, it puts people out in the wild basically alone. I mean, they literally have no camera crew. They are their own camera crew. And every single person that's on that show ends up collecting something. They end up taking home a staff or something they made or, you know, I mean, really a lot of different things to resemble that experience. And I think as human beings, we're really big on that. We're really big on collecting objects throughout our journeys uh, that have significance to us. And I think as pagans and as people that are very spiritual and connected to the land, this means so much more. I mean, this is not just a rock that was on a trip that I really enjoyed. This is now something that has meaning and spiritual connection. Um, and when we start, you know, praying to this thing, when we start invoking Odin into this thing, it becomes even more powerful. Um, and so I think that this is something that would have been practiced back, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years ago um, by early pagans. Um, because I, I do think it's something that makes you feel more connected. And when you find something that is significant, like, wow, this rock is important to me. This has value to me. So I really do think that the ancestors did collect these. I do think a lot of pagan societies had sacred objects. And I'm sure even, you know, surviving native societies still have objects like this where it's like, oh, hey, this might be just a stick to some, but this is a ceremonial stick that was passed down by three generations of elders. This means something. And I, I think that's something that was practiced even with the, the Norse and Germanic tradition. Um, so yeah, this is my really long-winded way of subscribing, of telling you that you should, of hopefully inspiring you to return to objects, to return to craft as I have here. Um, because now, you know, after, I mean, this has only really only taken me an hour. After an hour's worth of work, I now have a sacred object that means so much more to me. Otherwise, I'm going to get back crafting and uh, I'll let you know when I'm starting to craft something new. So, folk, until the hall, skull.